Oh, what's the hurry? Having fun? Can anyone join in? Is my desk free now? Of course. Sticky. You had to wash it with soap. Mrs. Van Dan's got some shampoo. I saw it in that cupboard. I really don't know what we're celebrating. Mother, we've got a lot to be thankful for. Like what? Well, we've got enough to eat. We've got each other. We've got the kindest and bravest helpers in the world. You sound just like your father. Well, at least he's not always moaning all the time and snapping at me. Oh. And he's not always siding with Margot. There's another tooth gone. Was it really that difficult as a baby? You were rather tiring, dear. I can't help it. It's just how I am. I'm sorry. Is Mushi in here? I've got to lock him in the attic because of the fleas. Baruch ata Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, v'tzivano lechadlik nea shel chamuk. And then Hanukkah arrived. Matu Yeshua si lechanae nishabeyar tikom beis tifilasi. Risham Doda Nishabea, Lia Sahin Matbea, Mitsaham Nabea, Azebom Mishim. Excuse me. Mushi! The food shortages are getting worse. Bet bought me these sandals, but my feet are freezing. Bet's coming up from the office to eat with us every lunchtime at the moment. I don't know how she stands it. Mr. Van Dam's in a filthy temper because he can't get enough cigarettes. In fact, everyone's been getting on everyone else's nerves. My father simply adored me. He gave me lots of tips for the boys. He told me, if a gentleman gets fresh with you, just say, remember, sir, I'm a lady. Bep understands, don't you, dear? I'm sure you have lots of beau. Leave the girl alone. Oh, she doesn't mind, do you, dear? Would you like more soup? Oh, you've got a good appetite, haven't you? I don't suppose there's enough to eat in your house, what with all those brothers and sisters and your father off sick. Would you like more soup, Margaret? No, thank you. Oh, watching you wait, are you, dear? Will you stop this stupid chatter? I wish my hair was blonde. Isn't she pretty? When I grow up, I'm going to be in the movies. Can I have a look? You wouldn't be interested. She's such a swat. I heard that. I know she's my sister, but we haven't got anything in common. If we weren't cooped up in here, we'd hardly speak to each other. Oh, Bet, you're so lucky. You could go out and breathe the fresh air and go skating and eat ice cream with your friends. I miss my friends so much. I just sit at my desk all day, then I go home and help Mother. You're so lucky. Anyway, it's winter. There's no ice cream. It's half past one. Anne? What have you said to Margot? 
nothing. She's very upset. I'm not upset. Pim, it's so unfair. <laughs> it's 20 to 6, Mr. Dussel. Would you be good enough to let me use the desk now? I'm not ready. It's my turn. I have important work to do, young lady. So do I. What? Scribbling in your diary. It's my room just as much as yours. You already have use of it for an hour and a half, five days a week, and during my nap. But you have it twice as much as me. And why is that? Hmm? Because I'm a professional, not a little girl. I'm not a little girl, Anne. Could you help with the potatoes? Mother, please stick up for me. No more arguments, please. But, Mother, it's so unfair! Stop it, Anne! Why do you make everything into such a drama? I'm so sorry, Mr. Dussel. Whose side are you on? <coughs> when you first came here, Mr. Dussel, <laughs> When you first came here, we agreed that the room would be shared by the two of us. Logically, that would mean that I would have the morning and you would have the afternoon. I'm not asking for that much, just two more hours twice a week. And where would I do my work? Perhaps I should go back to my nice little surgery on the Hellengacht. Well, you could always work in the lavatory. You spend long enough in there. Sorry. What is it, dear? It's Mr. Dussel. Um, can we speak later? We, we only have half an hour. Mr. Kugler has to go. Oh, well, wait a moment. Um, will you excuse me, Mr. Kugler? What is it, darling? Please say something to Mr. Dussel. Mother won't help. She's being horrible as usual. Huh? I know it's a, a difficult situation. You need your privacy to study, and, and so does my daughter. Uh, Good old father. If I may say so, Mr. Frank. She's a very headstrong child. <laughs> you see, if, if it were Margot, I wouldn't mind. Writing is very important to her. Uh, I believe it's the only way she can make some sense of the world, find solace in these terrible circumstances. Work and hope. That's what we tell our daughters, Mr. Dussel. That's why we believe so strongly in their education. The only freedom is in here. This is our hope for the future. Out of respect for you, I'll agree. Yes. I don't want people to say that Anne failed her exams because of me. Thank you, Mr. Dussel. Mr. Dussel sulked for two days. So childish of him, don't you think? Helpers. Outside, things are getting worse. Meet met my teacher in the street last week. 
There are only four of my classmates left. She didn't know which ones. Women come home from shopping to find their house sealed and their children gone. Children come home from school to find their parents disappeared. My dear me, thank you so much. It's a pleasure. I hope and to add to our woes, Mr. Dussel has started work. Keep quiet, woman. I'll hear you in the street. Somebody come to help. Somebody, please. Oh, oh. Now open up again and relax. What are you doing? My Latin. Didn't you ever stop studying? You don't understand, do you? What? It's the only way I can survive. Why don't you put this on your bed? I'm fine! Why can't I make you love me? That's not Hebrew. No, it's Spanish. Spanish? Yes, it means thank you for your help today. Is that what you're studying? So I've, uh, I've reached level three. You see, uh, when the war's over, <laughs> Charlotte and I plan to emigrate to South America. You never told me. No. Buenas noches. Buenas noches. Buenas noches. Part four of The Diary of Anne Frank is tomorrow here on the BBC HD channel at the same time, seven o'clock. Tonight, it's a new day of competition in The Slammer, next. <laughs>